The first real images of Neptune. What have we discovered? NASA's Voyager 2 became the first spacecraft to see Neptune in the summer of 1989. Voyager 2 made its closest approach to any planet since leaving Earth 12 years ago. Passing around 4,950 kilometers or 3,000 miles over Neptune's North Pole. Then, Voyager 2 passed around 40,000 kilometers or 25,000 miles from Neptune's biggest moon, Triton, and gave us the opportunity to explore the unexplored. Let's bring the facts to the light that we have discovered so far about Neptune. Hey amazing people, welcome back to our channel, and today we are going to discuss everything that we have discovered about Neptune. Do watch the video till the end to know some interesting facts. So without further delay, let's start. Neptune was discovered using mathematics on September 23rd, 1846. It is currently believed by most astronomers to be the outermost major planet in our solar system. Johann Gottfried Gaul, Urbain Jean Joseph Le Verrier, and John Couch Adams all contributed to the discovery of this planet in 1846 in their own ways. Their different efforts to locate Neptune resulted in an international argument over who should be credited with the discovery of our solar system's outermost planet. This planet orbits the Sun every 165 years, has 14 moons named after sea nymphs, is battered by supersonic winds, and has only been photographed up close once by a spaceship. Quite flashy, isn't it? But there is more to know about Neptune. Around Neptune, which is a blue-colored gas giant like Saturn and Jupiter, Voyager 2 discovered six new moons and four rings. The blue in its atmosphere is methane gas. A large storm is known as the Great Dark Spot was also visible in Voyager 2 photos. Unlike the Galileo, Cassini, and New Horizons missions, which produced extraordinarily detailed shots of Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, respectively, Voyager 2's views of Neptune and Uranus are, in comparison, quite fundamental. The vast majority of what we actually know about Neptune came from Voyager. All the close-ups and big shots of Neptune's disk come from JPL's photo journal, which was compiled after Voyager made its final exit from the inner solar system. Voyager 2 massively increased our knowledge of Neptune, but since then, it's been a trickle because it's so challenging to see the outer planets with telescopes, says Tom Kurz, an astronomer at the Royal Observatory Greenwich, London. On Neptune, scientists know there are black belts, dazzling clouds of methane ice and cyclonic storms, but only a dedicated expedition could learn more about the mechanics that govern its atmosphere. Neptune receives just approximately 0.001% of the sunlight that Earth receives. Voyager 2's camera had to take long exposure shots in such a low-light situation. However, it was moving too rapidly to do so without drastically blurring the photographs. At its closest approach, Voyager 2's thrusters fired slightly, turning the spacecraft to assist maintain the camera pointed on Neptune. The flyby of the ice giants by Voyager 2 yielded a lot of fresh information on these icy behemoths, exceeding everyone's wildest expectations. The spacecraft detected additional rings and moons surrounding both planets, as well as violent winds on Neptune when none were predicted. It also showed that Neptune's moon Triton was genuinely stunning, implying the presence of a deep ocean that may host microbial life. Hansen, a member of the Voyager imaging team during the flybys of Uranus and Neptune, recently recalled two of Voyager's many highlights. The images of plumes or clouds on Triton, and of course, seeing Neptune's great dark spot for the first time. However, many mysteries remain, such as how the planets originated around the early sun, and why they have such high axial tilts in comparison to the rest of the solar system's planets. Scientists have been clamoring for a return to these magnificent worlds for decades, and with important planetary alignments approaching towards the end of the decade, now could be the ideal moment to schedule a repeat visit. An ice giant trip, if we can beat the clock, might help us solve the planet's lingering riddles and bring us new insight into their terrifying beauty. Neptune is appropriately referred to as an ice giant. The planet orbits the Sun at such a huge distance from it and receives so little heat from it that their typical temperatures are hundreds of degrees below freezing. Scientists may be able to better comprehend the prevalence of ice giants in the cosmos if they can figure out how and where Neptune evolved. 
According to computer calculations, the low density of planetesimals in the primordial outer solar system as well as the weak solar gravity would have made it extremely impossible for the ice giants to develop where they are today. Neptune's magnetic field is displaced out from the planet's core by more than half its radius and inclined at 47 degrees off its axis. As the planet rotates, its magnetosphere forms a strange corkscrew pattern. The abnormal magnetospheres are still a mystery to scientists. Internal dynamos or conductive global mantle seas are known to create planetary magnetic fields. The actual source of Neptune's screwy magnetospheres, like its origin, is unclear since its magnetic poles are so skewed off-center. Despite getting only a fraction of the sun's light, Neptune has weather, and what weather it is! Wispy white clouds scud over the globe, and in 1989, Voyager 2 measured winds of 1,000 miles per hour near a weird, previously unknown black area on Neptune, the fastest of any planet in the solar system. The Great Dark Spot, as it was known, was a huge whirling maelstrom the size of Earth. The storm has diminished since its discovery, but other ones have developed elsewhere on the planet. Scientists may be able to get access to Neptune's lower atmosphere by examining these black regions. Because Neptune is distant from the Sun by such a large distance, different seasons such as autumn, winter and others on Earth endure just a few months. Each particular period on Neptune lasts more than 40 years. Solar radiation intensity on the planet is likewise rather low. This has a direct impact on the temperature that prevail on Neptune's surface, as the thermometer on the ice giant's surface never rises above minus 201 degrees Celsius, owing to its material composition. The hue of Neptune is a deep blue. While methane has a role, another fundamental component is most likely to be responsible for the deep blue, but which one is unknown. The mantles are largely super hot, high pressure global oceans of water, ammonia, and methane beneath the planet's atmosphere. Effectively, a liquid electrical conductor. There might be a deep layer inside their mantles where water is broken down into a soup of hydrogen and oxygen ions. The pressure is so tremendous, thousands of miles beneath their surface that methane separates apart and solidifies into diamond crystals that descend to the planet's cores. Yes, diamonds may fall from the sky. How fascinating! Neptune's mass is around 17 times that of Earth, with a core weighing just 1.2 Earth masses. Despite its distance of 10 astronomical units, Neptune emits 2.61 times the amount of energy it gets from the Sun. This could be due to an ancient impact from a protoplanet, which expelled the majority of Uranus's heat. This would also account for the planet's unusual tilt. However, scientists are still unsure if Neptune's core heat fluctuates seasonally. While various assertions were made, including the discovery of incomplete arcs, conclusive rings were not identified until Voyager 2 arrived at Neptune. Gaul, Leveria, Lassell, Arago, and Adams are the names of the five astronomers who made significant discoveries about the planet in 1846. Johann Gottfried Gaul, Urbain Jean Joseph Leveria and John Couch Adams all independently discovered the planet using mathematics in 1846, making it the first planet discovered using calculations. Neptune has 14 recognized moons. Because of their small size, the two outermost, Naso and Samath, are remarkable. Naso has a diameter of 37 miles, which is 60 times smaller than the moon. With a diameter of 25 miles, Samath is even smaller. While not the tiniest moons in the solar system, that honor presently belongs to Mars's moon Deimos, which measures 7.6 miles in diameter. Naso circles its mother planet at a distance of little over 30 million miles. A single orbit around Neptune takes tiny Naso a whopping 27 years. Samath, on the other hand, circles the ice giant at a distance of slightly over 30 million miles. Triton, Neptune's biggest moon, is the planet's most prominent satellite. The moon is larger than Pluto and the only huge moon in the solar system with a retrograde orbit, which means it orbits Neptune in the opposite direction of the planet's rotation. Triton is covered in relatively new surface features, has active geysers, and even evidence of a deep ocean. According to Voyager 2, due to its odd orbit and surface, scientists believe Triton is a caught Kuiper Belt object, while an alternative mode of capture during the early solar system, when planets passed close enough to take moons, has recently been proposed. Triton's atmosphere is one of the thicker of the solar system's moons, although it is still far thinner than Earth's. This atmosphere, which is made up of nitrogen, methane and carbon dioxide, was most likely created by volcanic activity. 
Triton is one of only three solar system worlds known to be currently volcanically active, along with Earth. Continuous geological activity suggests the presence of a subterranean ocean. As a result, the NASA Outer Planets Assessment Group Roadmaps to Ocean Worlds ROW Group recognized Triton as one of the highest priority candidate ocean worlds for future missions in the recent NASA Roadmap to Ocean Worlds study, which outlines their results. Over the next few decades, ROW provides a framework to steer the future of ocean globe exploration. A new mission vying for a spot in NASA's Discovery Program hopes to solve these puzzles. Trident, named after the ancient Roman sea god, Neptune's three-pronged spear is one of four teams working on concept studies for future missions. Those enigmatic plumes seen by Voyager 2 are quite interesting. Water from the core is suspected to be forcing its way through thick ice crusts on Saturn's moon Enceladus, and potentially Jupiter's moon Europa. If the plumes on Triton are caused by an ocean that is far out in the solar system than Europa and Enceladus, scientists will learn more about how internal oceans emerge. Triton's potential ocean evolved after it was caught by Neptune's gravity, unlike other known ocean planets. It would also broaden scientists' understanding of possible water sources. One of Triton's three key aims is to figure out what variables lead to a solar system body having the requisite elements to be livable, which includes water. The spacecraft would have an instrument that would examine the moon's magnetic field to see if there is an ocean inside, as well as other equipment that would look into the powerful ionosphere, organic-rich atmosphere, and strange surface characteristics. The exploration of vast, unknown areas is the second objective. Triton has the biggest undiscovered solid surface on this side of the Kuiper Belt in the solar system. The majority of what we know about the moon comes from Voyager 2 data, although we've only seen around 40% of its surface. The majority of the rest would be mapped by Trident, and Trident would utilize its full-frame imaging camera to photograph the same plume-rich region that Voyager 2 photographed. In full Neptune shine, when the sun's reflected light lights Triton's dark side, Scientists would be able to see how Triton has changed since their previous visit and learn more about how activities. Triton's third main objective is to figure out how that strange surface continues to regenerate itself. In geological terms, the surface is very youthful, perhaps about 10 million years old in a 4.6 billion year old solar system, and has essentially no visible craters. There's also the matter of why it has distinctive landforms like dimpled cantaloupe terrains and projecting walled plains, which set it apart from other frigid moons. The answers may provide insight into how landscapes evolve on other ice bodies. Okay guys, that's all for now. There are numerous facts that we believe are yet to be explored. We hope as space technology advances, we'll be able to know much more about this ice giant's planet. Hope you all like this video. If you do, then like it and don't forget to share it with your friends and near ones. If you are new to our channel, then do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so you will not miss any video. Stay healthy, be positive, spread humanity. Peace.